I can't use those so official names because we're very bad. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, yesterday we had a we saw a discussion on uh, Citizen TV and uh, you know uh, about the, the scorecard of uh, uh, what uh, so far the president has done for the one year. Uh, I mean, from your side, what is your take and uh, how? What do you think uh, the president has done that is uh, that is uh, that people can see? Well, uh, as we know that uh, we as a mayor are going to respond uh, officially uh, to uh, what has been put out by uh, the Kenya Kwanza team. Uh, we are going to come out with our comprehensive position, I think, on Saturday. Um, but from what you could see, uh, what the people themselves, because the, the taste of the pudding is in the eating. And it is the people who have been eating this pudding who spoke out yesterday. Uh, and from uh, even the opinion polls that have been carried out, uh, people basically have given this uh, regime, um, I think, a great deal in terms of performance. Mm -hmm. I, I think. Uh, they can say whatever they want to say. But on the issue of cost of living, they have completely failed. They failed the Kenyans terribly. Because they came into government on the promise of reducing the cost of living. That was supposed to be their primary agenda. But basically, consciously, they have increased the cost of living. Um, I think they double it, if, if not treble it. And it's still even going on by increasing more taxes right now. Uh, I don't know who their advisors are, but I think that uh, they failed the people of Kenya very badly. On the issues of governance, it's, it's the same way. They have actually failed the people of Kenya. Uh, they have eroded independent of the institutions of governance. Now, there is no clear distinction between the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. Uh, then, on the other very key sectors like health, like education, like agriculture, they have also performed this way. Our team has analyzed uh, the performance generally, and, and um, we are going to go and give our own scorecard uh, within the next 48 hours. From, from what I know, most of the time and uh, how I used to see back then, uh, you know, when you as a leader, you've, uh, you've been chosen as a president, there are those people who've helped you to become the president. And uh, most of the time, they used to award them as uh, ambassadors. And now, this time, we can see the president took those friends, the close friends who are politicians, and uh, put them as CSs. Does this worry you as, uh, as you know, as uh, one of the leaders in this nation? Will they score the, 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 thing, the, the marks that they are supposed to score? You see, I am not uh, uh, against uh, appointment of people in politicians as uh, CSs. Cabinet, cabinet secretaries, because it's just basically uh, like a, a minister, and that is a political appointment. So in that regard, I don't uh, really have a serious uh, objection, uh, except the quality uh, of, of, of the people he has put, which is seen in terms of how they are performed. Uh, where I have issue is uh, appointment of uh, principal secretaries. The principal secretaries are civil servants. A civil servant should be uh, non-political. They should be professional people who do their jobs professionally without meddling in the politics. But a situation where former members of parliament are being appointed as permanent secretaries. Uh, 
political activists, failures, people who had really designed to go and run for, for political offices and who failed, being again reappointed into public service, political civil service, in my view, it's a very misguided decision. If, if our system here, our administration, is copied from the British system, there's what they call Her Majesty's Loyal Civil Service. It consists purely of non-political officers, people who have joined or who have chosen public service as a career. Uh, from leaving school, they join, and they are trained in the administration. They are trained how to handle government affairs, and they serve loyally, respective of the government of the league, whether the government is that of Labour or of Conservatives. They continue to serve, but this is a situation where you bring in political failures into civil service, and you suck highly qualified, highly trained uh, bureaucrats purely because they don't belong for the tribe. In my view, it's a very, very misguided and unfortunate development. Apart from that, I know that, uh, you know, we, we, we are running out of time. Uh, we have so many young people in this country right now who are, who are jobless. And uh, from the previous regime, they, they, they had secured a space for them to be able to get something for their daily, uh, you know, life. I mean, does it worry you uh, that, uh, you know, we are having so many jobless young people in the country who are doing nothing and waiting for the jobs that are being promised right now? It's very, very uh, worrying indeed. The unemployment rate is too high in the country. And nothing has been done in to, to mitigate the current situation. Because jobs cannot be created overnight. But the only other ways and means in which somebody can put money into the pockets of these young people. Uh, you remember uh, we, when, when we were with the, the late President Kibaki, we came up with the Kazakh of Jana. Uh, later on, they were called Kazim Tani. Uh, this was basically uh, a, a similar program to which uh, the government will inject money uh, for projects like clearing up the, the, the towns, uh, clearing the drainages, uh, planting trees, um, um, and I think that was which will help to put money in the pocket of the youth uh, at this, this time, indeed. Uh, and that really helped a lot, because as you know, we are also going through a recession hmm, uh, caused by uh, COVID-19, and also for this war in uh, Ukraine, and you've got international recession generally. Uh, the, the, the government could come up with more creative uh, solutions uh, that could help really meet the flight due to the country. Lastly, Baba, because uh, I know so many people have been asking this question, and uh, from my side I normally say, wewe ni mzalendo. Uh, they said, oh, they, they've been asking, kwanini wewe au kuiba? You know, kwanini wewe au kuiba? That's one of the questions. So many Kenyans have been asking because you've been saying that they stole the election. Uh, I mean, from your side, what can you tell Kenyans who've been asking that question? I just tell them that two wrongs don't make a right. Uh, I don't believe in stealing. Uh, I believe in fair play. That if you're going into a contest with me, beat me, I will congratulate you. And if I beat you, you should just do the same. I don't even make up, come up with methods to, 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 to rig so that I will declare the winner. But that's how not to do it. Because next time around, uh, somebody will be able to, to, to steal better, and, and then uh, he will be declared the winner. 
So what we want is to see that we go into contest and may the, the best person win. That's what we're talking about, and creating a truly level playing field. And I say that Mr. Chebukati belongs to prison. What he's done twice in this country is disgraceful. And history, in a view, is judging very harshly. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for those who have been watching us.